Today we're going to be working on this Kubota M5700 tractor. When this tractor is running, it really is an excellent machine. It has a five-cylinder engine that makes almost 60 horsepower, it can tow over four tons, and with the bucket back on it can lift over one ton. You can get a lot of work done with this tractor. But the problem is right now it's not running. It'll start, but when you try to get power out of it, so when you take your foot off the clutch, the engine quickly stalls and dies. We need to figure out why that is. Now, a diesel engine tractor like this really needs three things to run. You need air, fuel, and compression. As far as air is concerned, I've already replaced the air filters on this tractor, so I know that it is getting air. So is this a fuel problem, or is it a compression problem? I happen to think that it's a fuel problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the schematic for the fuel system on this tractor to try to understand how it works. And from there, we'll try to fix or replace whatever component is bad. And hopefully, once we do that, the tractor will run again. Let's do it. Okay, just to show you what I mean here, I'm on the tractor and I'm going to start it and I'm going to put it in first gear and try to drive and you'll see how quickly it stalls and dies. Okay, it didn't start at all that time. Let's try it again. It just has nothing and you can see how that fuel light came on so that suggests that there's a problem with the fuel system so let's see what we can do here i have a diagram of the fuel system on this tractor this is an entirely mechanical system that has both a low and a high pressure side let's talk about how it works beginning with the tank fuel flows through this line into the fuel filter through the filter element out through this line through the fuel lift pump out through this line into the fuel injection pump this line right here this is just an air return. If any air builds up in the filter, it returns to tank through that line. Now, everything that I've just described from the tank, through the filter, through the lift pump, that is the low pressure side of the system. This system operates at just a few PSI, which is provided by a diaphragm in the fuel lift pump that moves back and forth. It's the movement of that diaphragm that provides the suction required to pull the fuel through these lines. The high pressure side of the system begins with the fuel injection pump. Notice that it has five ports on it because this is a five cylinder engine and each of those five ports delivers pressurized fuel at about 2000 PSI to the injectors. Now these four ports here, they are connected to these four fuel injectors. It's just that the line is not shown on the diagram. Lastly, this line right here, this line is a fuel return line. If any excess fuel builds up in the injection pump, it will return to tank through that line. Now, one extremely important component that's not labeled on the diagram is this component right here. This is the fuel camshaft. Remember, this is an entirely mechanical system. It's this fuel camshaft that provides both the power and the timing required for proper fuel delivery. In the case of the injection pump, you have five cams here that control each of these five ports. These cams push plungers up and down, and that's what provides the force required to pressurize the fuel so that it can be delivered to the injectors. It's a similar system for the lift pump. You have one cam right here that pushes on this plunger, and that's what pushes the diaphragm back and forth so that we can suck fuel through these lines. Now, the concept of a fuel camshaft is something that a lot of people probably aren't very familiar with because modern gasoline-powered cars don't have them. In a modern car, you have an electronic fuel pump that delivers fuel to the injectors, which are computer controlled, and electronically inject fuel into either the intake manifold or directly into the engine, depending on whether you have a port side injected car or a direct injected car. But in either case, there is no fuel camshaft. Fuel camshafts are something that you're generally only going to find on older tractors and construction equipment that have extremely simple electrical systems with no electronically controlled fuel delivery. I've pulled up a diagram showing some cross sections of the fuel lift pump so that we can see inside it to better understand how it works. I've done this because I think that this is the component that has failed and is why the tractor is not running properly. In the top diagram, you can see what the lift pump looks like when the cam, shown right here, is in the down position. Here the cam is not pushing on the plunger and the diaphragm is retracted. Because of that, suction is created to pull fuel from the fuel filter into this port into the lift pump. In contrast, in the bottom diagram, you can see what happens when the cam rotates 180 degrees. 
it's then pushing up on the plunger, the diaphragm is in the upward position, and positive pressure is created to push fuel out of this port into the fuel injection pump. This entire system relies on a functioning diaphragm in order to work because it's the diaphragm that's responsible for creating the alternating negative and positive pressure that's needed to move fuel around. The problem though is that these diaphragms are known to fail. And on this tractor, which is over 20 years old and which has an original lift pump, I believe the diaphragm has failed. And because of that, the lift pump cannot supply adequate fuel to the injection pump and there's not enough pressurized fuel to run the engine. So the engine is stalling. So let's see what happens when we replace this lift pump. I think once we do, the tractor will run normally. I'm also going to show replacement of the fuel filter because that needs to be done anyways. But ultimately, I think it's the lift pump that is going to solve the problem. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're back at the tractor, and this right here is the fuel lift pump. It's located right in between the engine oil filter and the fuel filter. I'll put up a picture on the screen to show that more clearly. In order to remove the lift pump, we have to remove these two lines. This is the line from the fuel filter, and this line goes to the injection pump. We also have to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the lift pump in place. There's also a gasket back there that we need to be sure to replace. Before we do any of this though, we have to make sure that the fuel cock on the fuel filter is closed. That way, when we remove this line right here, we won't end up draining the entire tank. This is really a very simple thing to do, so let's do it. Okay, the new lift pump is on, the fuel cock is open again, and at this point I think the tractor should run. I haven't tried starting it yet, and it may take a few cranks of the engine in order to get fuel back into the lines, but let's see what happens. If I can make it up and down the driveway, then I'll consider this a success. Still has the same problem. Going back to this diagram of the fuel system, since replacing the lift pump didn't solve the problem, the thing to do now is to check all of the proximal points in the system to make sure that fuel can actually get to the lift pump. That means checking this line here, replacing the fuel filter, and checking this line right here. In particular, I'm worried about this line because it's not a filtered line, meaning that if contaminants get into the diesel tank, they can fairly easily work their way into this line and obstruct it. And obviously, if this line's obstructed, it would starve the engine of fuel and the tractor would not run properly. Now, when I remove this line, so when I disconnect this point right here, I do need to be prepared to drain the entire diesel tank. Because once this point is disconnected, fuel is just going to flow straight out of the bottom of the tank. That's okay, though, because once the tank is empty, I can look inside it and see if it's dirty. And if it is, I'll add removing the tank and cleaning it to the list of things that I need to do to this tractor. This right here is the line where the fuel leaves the tank and goes to the fuel filter. I'm going to detach that line and then using this funnel that I have here, which has a flexible line attached to it, I'll drain the fuel off from the tank into a can. Once that's done, I can completely remove that fuel line and blow compressed air through it just to make sure that it's not obstructed.
Here's a better angle to show exactly how the tank is draining. It's been about 15 minutes since I first started draining it, and for the entire time it's been going at about this speed. It's barely enough to maintain a steady stream. It should be quite a bit faster, especially since I took the fuel cap off. So there's likely an obstruction somewhere in the tank, so I'm going to need to remove it and figure out exactly what's going on in there. That may be why the tractor is not running. Okay, it's the following day and all of the diesel is out of the tank. And now that it's empty, I've been able to get a light down in there to see what it looks like. The good news is that it's pretty clean. The bad news, well, it's actually not really bad news because we found the problem. The other news is that there is something in there. Let me see if I can show you on camera. That right there is a leaf. And it's that little leaf that is preventing fuel from leaving the tank, starving the engine of fuel, and rendering this tractor completely useless. Let's get that out of there. Unfortunately, the leaf is a bit too deep in there to get with a pair of pliers. So I'm gonna to try to use this long screwdriver in conjunction with this vacuum to get it out. I've taped the hose of the vacuum to this piece of rebar here just so that it stays straight as I stick it into the tank. go. Since there were contaminants in the fuel tank, it's definitely time to replace the fuel filter. I've pulled up an exploded view of the filter assembly to show you how it comes apart. All you need to do is undo this screw ring and then pull down on the filter bowl and everything should come right out. There's a few things worth noting here. First, there's a gasket at the top of the filter element and there is another gasket right here at the rim of the filter bowl. We're going to be replacing both of those. Also, there's a spring at the bottom of the filter bowl that holds the filter element up into the filter housing. We just need to make sure that that spring is properly seated as we put the new filter element into the bowl. Now it's time to blow out the line connecting the fuel tank to the fuel filter. Before doing this, make sure that the fuel cock is open since we want to blow air through the line and then out the filter housing. I've taken the filter assembly apart and I just want to take a moment to show you what the bowl looks like. You can see inside there that it's fairly dirty. So when you have a bowl like this, it's a good idea to soak it in kerosene overnight. And then you can wipe it down again in the morning and it'll be pretty clean. This right here, the filter, we're going to get rid of it so I don't need to clean it. But it is quite dirty, so it clearly needed to be replaced. So let's get this thing soaking for a bit. And then tomorrow morning we'll clean it out and put everything back together. Okay, this has been soaking overnight. Let's see if the kerosene helped to clean it up. Quite a bit better. There's still a little bit of stuff down there. I'll work on getting that out, but it's definitely a lot cleaner. Now let's get the filter assembly back together. First put this spring back. There's a groove right in the bottom of the filter bowl that it sits in. The filter element sits right on top, and then we have these two gaskets. To get a good seal, you should generally wet gaskets with whatever fluid they're going to be sealing against. In this case, I'm going to use this kerosene that the filter bowl had been soaking in. The gasket that this will be replacing is still on the tractor, so let's go replace it now. The gasket's located right on the underside of the filter housing. I'm going to use a pick to carefully pry it off. The 
and now put the new gasket in place. Finally, we're ready to put the filter assembly back onto the tractor. All right, let's get a gallon of fuel in here and see if it runs. Okay, let's see what happens. We made it all the way down and up that steep driveway. I think I can call this one a success. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.